Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, as well as a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Mastering Probability, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side under um, uh, Featured Content, Mastering Probability. You can get that for one month for $149, six months for six for $6.95, which is the savings of $199, or 22% in one full year, for $11.95, which is the savings of $593, or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So the bottom line, you can go get it. Steve has a huge amount of tools that he uses each and every day. You get to use all those tools. It's a total explanation of how to use all those tools. So get over there, sign up right here, right now. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Are you telling me that March Madness doesn't just apply to basketball? That's correct. I like it. I like <laughs> there, that. That's... There you go. You got the DJT, uh, 50, what'd you say, 51 bucks a share? Yeah. Where, where, where's the OB1? I'm uh, telling Matt. you, man, at three and a half million dollars for a year, this is like the, this is like the ultimate. I mean, it really is, man. It's like, how about that paper? I mean, you can exactly. see why people want to go public, right? You know? Oh, for sure. For sure. Think yeah, about absolutely. this just one second, folks, okay? Because if you go into your local community, think about buying any store downtown in your local community and think about how many questions you'd ask versus buying the paper. I, this is how it goes, though. I mean, we, I've seen it before. We've all yeah. seen it before. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. So uh, I thought last week, Tommy and I, uh, he was filling in for you. We yes, were talking I heard about the program, yeah. Perfect. So asking that question, you know, has a stock market topped? And I really think it's applicable to this week as well, although a different set of charts and things that we're taking a look at. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, is take a look at how the S&P 500, you and I have done this periodically, yeah. how the S&P 500 is trading priced in other major currencies. And last Friday, what we saw was the S&P made new all-time highs priced in euros, priced in yen, Price in Great British Pounds, Australian dollars, the Swedish Krona, and the Swiss francs out there. In Canadian dollars was made on uh, last uh, Thursday out there. So we still have the S&P 500 pushing higher in these major currencies, which is how people in that 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 you know, live in those environments. If you're in if you're in Japan, you know you're thinking in terms of yen. You're not thinking in terms of of U.S. dollars. So that's one thing that each of us need to take into account. Is, uh, is that we just don't think just uh, we're not just taking a look at just how the S&P is trading in terms of U.S. dollars. So yes. it was the first thing that I wanted to share with folks. The second thing is last Friday, the S&P 500, the ES mini and the spy negated weekly TD9 count tops. As you mentioned, there's wow. a number of tools that I teach yeah. uh, folks and the TD9 count pattern is one of them. Uh, but what didn't uh, uh, negate a TD9 count top was the RSP, and really don't really I don't take a look at this often enough. But the RSP, folks, is the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. It is it is worth watching. For example, it's also worth watching QQEW. That's the equal weighted ETF for the uh, NDX 100. This week, I'm just focused, Tom, just on the S&P 500 and some of the derivatives that come out here. Yes. So we had. TD9 count tops were negated inside the SPY for the weekly time frame, which is a signal that the market wants to continue to rally. Same thing with regard to the ES Mini, same thing with regard to the S&P 500. But when I put this up there and I said, no, I've got to take a look at the equal weighted ETF and see what it did. It's only in bar number eight of a TD9 count. Actually, this week will become bar number nine. So we sh so, so as, as, if the question is, has the stock market top? Well, I think what we need to do is compare weekly signals for the SPY versus the RSP. And each person at home can do this with whatever tools it is that they use. So here I've got those two charts. The top panel is the equated ETF. Okay. The bottom panel, and it's a weekly time frame, folks, that we're taking a look at. Weekly, more of an intermediate term time frame signal for us. And the bottom is the SPY. Now, if we take a look at um, back on December, so the most recent pattern formed on December 29th. And it's where my cursor is. It's a little black uh, a vertical line. And we can see that everything was in sync there. But if we take a look at the prior one, the one that formed on July 28th out here, what we see is that the on July 28th, the SPY negated its TD9 count top, very much like what happened last Friday. Yes. The SPY negated a TD9 count top. However, when we take a look at the RSP, we can see that it was a week later Right. that it actually formed the TD9 count top. And we got confirmation of it that following week. 
So even though I would have ordinarily said, you know what, Tom, we've got negated TD nine count tops. This market is headed higher because I went ahead and took a look at the equal weighted. Now we've got the the phrase not so fast. Out that's here. pretty cool. Yeah, right. right. I'm with you. Okay. Right. So so just have to pay attention to that. So that's one cool thing that folks listening in uh, can learn or take from today. Uh, if I take a look at where we're at in the 96 year seasonal cycle, this doesn't take into account uh, presidential years or anything like just this 96 years worth of data for the S&P 500. What we can see here is this suggests that we put a top in around March 18th. And then we put in a low by the end of this week, right on March 31st, with your normal rally into the May time frame out there. So that's a 96-year seasonal cycle. Well, both the RSP and the ES Mini formed RMI tops, Roachman to Mitigator tops, last Friday. And that was on the 22nd. So we're within four days of forming at least a short-term top over this 96-year seasonal cycle out there. So something else for us to take into consideration. Now, what we've done here, Tom, is we've gone from a weekly time frame chart to take a look at the daily time frame chart. The SPY, by the way, and the S&P 500 do not have topping signals, not the topping signals of the patterns that I use out there. So here's something that's really wild. So I said, all right, I really need to investigate this RSP, the equal weighted ETF. The RSP on Friday is very likely to confirm an A to B equals CD to the up with a close above 164.90. So folks, you write that down on their pad of paper, take a look at RSP, see where it closes on Friday. At, when I put this chart together a couple hours ago, uh, the swing point that is taken out did 106 million shares. And we were at about 98 million or so. But I took a look at what the average daily volume is. It's 5 million shares. So it should do more than 106 million shares. So any close of a 164.90 says we've got a price projection of 219. That's 32% higher wow. from where we're at today. Yep. That's just the, that's the equal weight. I know. Right? If, we, if we went to a weighted, it would be different than that. So the day, daily RSP, it's forming a new. Now, here's the other thing. The RSP today, there's a new profile. If you look on the very left-hand side of the daily time frame, it's forming a new profile, which is below price. That's a bullish signal. That doesn't mean that price can't get down and target that level. When we have profiles formed below price, that is a bullish signal. So it kind of adds to what we're taking a look at on this monthly chart out there. And the weekly TD9 count top, well, what that should do, assuming that it takes hold, like we took a look at on the prior chart, that should at least result in a retracement back towards the South Southern change line. That's at 163.55. That's in the center portion. If we take a look at that daily time frame chart with regard to its profiles, if price does pull back, it should find support at between 165.01 and 165.47. It could get down to 164, but that 165.01, 165.47 should be a real strong support. So how do we put this puzzle together? It's pretty simple, folks. We do this one step at a time. If we take a look at uh, the RSP since the October lows, it hasn't even had a two-week pullback. Only one week pullback out there. Wow. It's just crazy out there. And the same in the case of the spy, it did have uh, a, a two-week retracement out there. So we got to take this one step at a time, folks. What I want you to watch tonight is I want you to watch the ES Mini, and the key level to be watching out there is going to be 52. 72.50. That's a TD9 count bottom. And if price closes below that, we head lower. And if it holds, we should see a rally up at about the 5,300. Not necessarily all overnight, but it could. Well, it could easily do that. It's a beautiful thing. Listen, folks, get over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see right into featured content, maximum probability. Steve, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Take care, Tom. Thanks. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Or commodities.